twins have always intrigued us. From Esau and Jacob in Genesis to Barbara and Jenna Bush in the White House, we have always been fascinated by twins. Hello, I'm your host, Steve. And I'm Leah, and today's Stu features curious stories about those curious genetic doppelgangers. Twin tales. If you have an appetite for the strange and bizarre, then pull up a chair and grab a spoon for another intriguing serving of Remnant Stew. Remnant Stew is gluten-free, organic, made from all natural, free-range ingredients and guaranteed to provide the recommended daily serving of curiosity. Well, first of all, let's look at the calendar. Today is March the 15th. And, of course, March the 15th is known as the Ides of March. Beware. My, yeah, one of my favorite Shakespeare plays, Julius Caesar, made this uh, well known. And uh, in that play, as you recall, Julius Caesar uh, was uh, encountered a soothsayer. He caught his attention and tells him, beware of the Ides of March. Well, rather than heed this warning, Caesar decides to waltz down to the Senate <laughs> and rub their noses in the fact that he doesn't have to do what they say. The senators seize this opportunity to make their point by stabbing Caesar to death. Yeah, it was a knife-changing experience, right? Oh, we're really reaching. Yeah, that too. (laughs) Among the stabbers, of course, was Caesar's best friend, Brutus. As in, Phil just threw in there, et tu, Brute, exclaimed Caesar just before he died. And for that reason, whenever your best friend turns on you and stabs you in the back, we say it's brutal. Oh, it's so thick in here. (laughs) (laughs) Of course, March 17th is St. Patrick's Day. And I think on on our Halloween episode last year, we mentioned that uh, in passing that this this holiday is really more celebrated by Irish Americans that uh, have immigrated from Ireland than it actually is in Ireland. And that's okay, because any excuse for a green beer. Exactly. <laughs> and uh, then March 19th, a little later this week, well, it's a special day to me. It's my big brother Dickie's birthday. Dick oh, Twilet. happy birthday. He's one of the nicest people that I know. Uh, it's also the day that the Swallows return to San Juan Capistrano every year. And uh, March 25th, let's not forget about this. This is a really good day, I think. March 25th, 25th is International Waffle Day. So go out and have a waffle. Have a waffle or stay home and have two. <laughs> Today's episode about twins was suggested by one of our loyal listeners. That's hard to say. Loyal, loyal listeners. listeners. Tanya Smith. She says <laughs> that she thinks twins are fascinating, and I have to yeah, agree. They certainly are. I remember, I personally remember having triplet girls in my kindergarten class and how drawn to them everyone was. And, and, from that point on, we right. all had dreams of being a twin or a triplet after having met them. And the those poor girls endured all kinds of intrusive <laughs> questions <laughs> from us. Like, you know, do they feel each other's pain? And, right. and just all – and how do they tell each other apart? That's right. what that, that's what somebody was asking. I'm like, you. Can, I remember sitting there thinking, <laughs> you kind of know who you are. Right. That's so, one you know, but but no, some kids like, how do you know you're that one? How do you know? <laughs> how do you know you're how do you know who, you're, know, like, who you, you are? You kind of know. <laughs> you kind of you just kind of know. <laughs> or I could be fooling you. <laughs> I remember back in my hometown, I went through all 12 grades of school with Diane and Jan Forrest, who were very pretty, identical twins. Uh, seeing them together was always fascinating to me and not just because they were pretty. They were <laughs> rodeo queens, too, by the way. They oh, were, wow. Uh, very talented uh, horseback riders. I always wondered what it would be like to have another human being who looked exactly like you. And I actually have twin stepdaughters. Uh, my wife's youngest daughters, Sarah and Laura, are identical mirror image twins. Now, not many people have heard of this. Uh, they are identical, but they are mirror image. This happens when the fertilized egg divides in such a way that the two halves are opposite. Laura is left-handed and Sarah is right-handed. My wife told me that their teeth came in on opposite sides of their mouths and also that they lost their baby teeth in the same manner. Now, if uh, if the two of them are together, I can tell them apart. But if I just see one of them, well, I've been fooled before. <laughs> <laughs> Did they do it on purpose? No, no. Um, I was actually staying at one of their houses, and the other one came to the door, and I thought it was the one that lived there, and I just kind of acted nonchalant like it was just her. And then later on I realized, wait a minute, that's the sister that I hadn't seen in a while. <laughs> <laughs> the stories about identical twins are fascinating. Sarah and Laura have told me that they have had the same dream. 
They often can share similar tastes and instincts. Just last week, they both showed up at our house wearing the same pair of of new shoes. And no, they didn't go shopping together. They didn't coordinate it together. Um, they just uh, felt like they just both liked the shoes and uh, both bought them and brought them wore them that day. Uh, now they're both married now with children of their own. They don't have twins, none of them. Um, even though they now live in different states, they're still very close to each other, and they take a very similar approach to raising their children. They both drive Honda Odyssey mommy vans, as they call them, uh, but they do have differences as well. One likes pink and the other prefers purple. So. Uh, even though they are identical twins, they have unique tastes uh, in some areas. That is, that's really cool. I would love, I, I would love it if I were a twin. <laughs> but could could the world stand to? I, I think that I think that Sarah and Laura really like being twins. I think they enjoy yeah. you know, being twins, um, even though they they live 800 miles apart now. They still are are very close wow. in a lot of ways. Well, there are a lot of interesting twin tales out there, so let's dive in. And we'll start off with some tales. Of twins who were separated at birth. These are always interesting uh, bits of fascinating information. Um, now, these first two stories come to us from a very funny article located in Cracked.com, written by uh, Jamie Flexman. And Jamie Flexman has given us permission. Thank you, Jamie. Yeah, uh, thank to, you. To quote directly from this article to you. So we are grateful to you, Jamie. Um, this is, first one is called James and James. Twins can be freaky but we all understand why they're so disturbingly alike. Not only do they share the same DNA, but they also tend to grow up surrounded by the same people, playing the same toys, and also doing the same activities. They were most likely traumatized by the same cartoons and disappointed (laughs) by the same birthday presents. That's when they don't do any of these things and still turn out exactly the same that we should really be freaked out. Take Ohio resident James Edward Lewis. James married a woman named Linda, but they divorced, and then he married a woman named Betty. And with Betty, he had a son that he named James Allen. Lewis had been adopted as a baby, and when he was in his late 30s, he discovered that he actually had a twin. And so he tracked down his twin for the very first time, and he met his twin brother, who was also named James. Both of their adopted parents (laughs) actually named them James. This is James Arthur Springer. And James Arthur Springer had also married a woman named Linda, divorced her, and also married a woman named Betty. And with her, he also had a son named James Allen. That, that's crazy. <laughs> well, there is one little difference. Uh, the first James Allen is A-L-A-N. The second was A-L-L-E-N. So uh, very oh. close, but not quite the same spelling, for sure. <laughs> After the story was first reported to the press in 1979, James and James, both of their adoptive parents, as I mentioned, uh, named them James, were contacted by psychologist Thomas Bouchard, who wanted to study how similar twins can be despite growing up apart. And it turns out the twins have even more similarities. They both had dogs named Toy when they were kids. They both liked math and carpentry in school, but they hated spelling. They both even had a carpenter shop in the garage. They both loved woodworking. Uh, They both had jobs in law enforcement, uh, Springer as a deputy sheriff and Lewis as a security guard. They both get headaches at the same time of the day. They both drank the same beer, smoked the same cigarettes, and drove the same Chevrolet. And that might have had something to do with the same headaches. That's right. Anyway. Could have been. (laughs) The Chevy. Yeah, the Chevy. Not the beer or the cigarettes, but the Chevy. Exactly. (laughs) Now, another case of of twins separated at birth involved Oscar and Jack. Now, this is a very strange story. Oscar Storr, S-T-O-H-R, and Jack Youf, Y-U-F-E, they were also separated as babies, only this was in Europe in the 1930s. Storr grew up in Germany, and he joined the Hitler Youth. Youf was raised as a Jew, and his family moved to Israel. One drew swastikas in his notebook, and the other wore a yarmulke. And yet, despite being as different as two human beings can be, When they met when they were in their 50s, they found out that they spoke alike, they liked the same foods, they shared oddly specific habits, like wearing rubber bands on their wrists, and they flushed the toilet before they used it. Now, (laughs) experts think this isn't really as weird as you might think. Store and youth are genetically identical, so it's normal that they should react the same way when exposed to the same everyday experiences, foods, rubber bands, and toilets, (laughs) etc. The fact that one was Jewish and the other a former Hitler fan is irrelevant, genetically speaking. 
Now, another set of uh, twins that was separated at birth involved Paula and Elsie. E-L-Y-S-E, I guess it's Elise. No, I think it's just Elise. Elise? Oh, Elise. Elise. Okay, Elise. Yeah. Paula and Elise. Uh, Despite being separated at birth and adopted by separate parents, sisters Paula Bernstein and Elise Schein lived similar lives. They both edited their high school newspaper, studied film in college, and became writers. The identical twins didn't know any of this until they met for the first time in 2003 at the age of 35. What they also found was that their separation was deliberate. Part of a controversial study. Yeah, this is kind of really weird. This gets into uh, fringe areas of acceptability, I think. It was a controversial study on nurture versus nature. The truth of their separation was hidden from their adoptive parents. And the lead scientist ended up stashing the research in a Yale University archive, knowing that it would be criticized. Oh, what so. a jerk. Sorry. Yeah, for sure. You know, let, let's separate these and see what happens. Study them. Now, we don't know his take on the nature versus nurture debate or exactly how he tracked the lives of Bernstein and Shine, but the twins have come to their own conclusions. Uh, according to uh, Paula, she said, since meeting... Uh, at least, it's undeniable that genetic pl- genetics play a huge role, probably more than 50%, she says. It's not just our taste in music or books. It goes beyond that. In her, I see the same basic personality. And yet, eventually, we had to realize that we are different people with different life histories. That's, that's crazy. And the whole right. nature versus nurture, I can, I'm just going to put it to rest right here. It's yeah. it's both. Yeah. <laughs> it's a combination. It's, it's both. It certainly is. <laughs> it seems to be. Now, here's an interesting story about twins marrying twins. You might think that this, uh, this would happen. Uh, there is a case of Craig and Mark Sanders, twin brothers, who in 1998 were attending the annual Twins Day Festival in, of course, Twinsburg, Ohio. (laughs) I've been to Twinsburg, Ohio, by the way. My wife's sister lives near there. There they met and hit it off uh, with Diane and Darlene Niedermeyer, twin sisters. The two pairs, and by the way, they're all identical twins. The two pairs of twins started going on double dates together, Craig and Diane, Mark and Darlene. While attending a baseball game, the couples even shared first kisses. Now, of course, if one couple kisses, it's just going to be really weird if the other one doesn't, you know, so you pretty much have to kind of follow along, you know. <laughs> um, once while on a double date to a casino, the couples won several thousand dollars. They took that as a sign that they should all get engaged. I, I mean, you know, Craig and Diane got engaged, and so did Mark and Darlene. They got married in a joint ceremony, of course and then they, they moved did. into adjacent houses in Texas. Diane and Craig gave birth to twin boys. Mark and Darlene have two non-twin girls and an extra boy thrown in for good measure. <laughs> Genetically speaking, their children are brothers and sisters as well as double cousins. That's that's funny. I'm sure, I wonder if they, you know, we didn't really get a whole lot of pranks and stuff involved in this, but they could really. <laughs> they, and Okay, so I personally know, okay, and I didn't ask if I could talk about them but i'm going to anyway Uh, a a couple of twins and and they don't think that they're identical but they look at josh and jeremy turner and they married women that i now that i know them i can tell them the women apart but the the women are so they're not twins they're not even sisters but they're so similar in appearance (laughs) that they kept getting uh mistaken for each other in different places it's pretty funny so they were well it makes sense that the twins would it be attracted to the same kind of looking yeah, person, I suppose? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so... And now for something completely off-topic and off-kilter. Brace yourself for the oddity du jour. For today's oddity du jour, cold letter. This is a crazy story. According to a December 2019 article by the Associated Press... Detectives were called in to look for Jean Soron Mathers, 75, who had not been seen in two weeks. They found the woman dead of natural causes in her apartment in the small city of, and I think that's, it's T-O-O-E-L-E. I think it's just Tool. Uh Tool? Tool. Near Salt Lake City. That's not all they found. The article states that while searching for clues on how long the woman had been dead, detectives opened the chest-style freezer and saw what officers described in a warrant as a large mass wrapped in black plastic. What do you think that could be? Uh, A bear. She was hunting bears. Yeah, well, when they tore up the plastic, (laughs) they found a man's body. Uh Uh-oh. 
The medical examiner used fingerprints to identify the frozen body as that of 69-year-old Paul Edward Mathers, Jean's husband, Uh and has said it's likely he died between February and March of 2009, so 10 years before. 10 years ago. That's not all they found. (laughs) Okay. <laughs> that's not enough uh, that's not but wait there's more not there's more wait there's more yeah, <laughs> they also thing. found a notarized letter with the body that appeared to have been written by paul that says that his wife did not kill him oh. so a notarized letter by a dead man saying that his wife did not kill him now, how does that work I, Detectives are trying to figure that one out. Right. Who's that notary? Let's track that notary down. Well, and they did. Handwriting experts have not yet verified uh, Mather's signature, or at least at the writing of this article. Mm-hmm. Uh, had not verified whether it was Mather, Mather's signature, and I assume Mr. Mather's signature. Right. And the woman who notarized the letter dated December 2008, so a year before he was uh, right. determined to have died, told police she didn't read it before stamping and signing it. And I've had things notarized before and they don't always read it yeah that's right so uh an investigation has been opened as you can imagine looking into the possibility that the couple together devised the scheme before he died or that the woman Jean, forged the letter so that she could keep collecting her husband's social security and veterans affairs checks that was that makes more sense after his death (laughs) well i mean or they could have devised that together together and uh, anyway, and I, I don't know if he was, uh, you know, in poor health and thought he might die. And so I had the, I don't know. But anyway, a, so it's possible. A lot of loose ends going on. A lot oddity. of loose ends. That, a is, lot a, that of, is a very odd oddity. Uh, yeah. <laughs> It's a big investigation, but it's possible that Gene Mathers could have fraudulently collected more than $177,000 in veteran affairs benefits. And I mean, and it's it's not... I mean, yeah, you're supposed to say allegedly and all of that kind of stuff, but right. I mean, she was collecting it when he obviously had been dead. So right. there you go. But there was a notarized letter that she did not kill him. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, that's good. So back to twins. Yes. So here we go. We've got, and, and this is interesting. Genetics is fascinating to right. me. Uh, two wombs, three babies. Hannah Kiersey of Northern e- Northam, England was born with uterus diphelsis. I'm glad you read that because I couldn't no, pronounce no, it. No, that's and I just completely butchered it. It's didelphus. Didelphus. It. Didelphus. Yeah. D-I-D-E-L-P-H-Y-S. That's right. A malformation of the reproductive organs that resulted in her having two wombs. While this is known to affect one in 3,000 women, which is, that's pretty common, that seems honestly. Like, yeah. The odds of giving birth to three healthy girls from two separate w- wombs are 25 million to one. Yeah, you know, I think anytime they don't know what the odds are, they just say 25 million that's to what, one. <laughs> that's a we good one. When, when I was, a, when I was reading like that, number? that's exactly what I was thinking. I'm like, really? I've, I've How run did across they that, that figure in other places, too. <laughs> but in December 2006, Hannah did exactly that. Identical twins, Ruby and Tilly, were delivered from one womb, while their fraternal twin sister, who will forever be that third wheel, it right. seems like, Greg race was delivered from the other while simultaneous gestation of the two wombs in women with uterus okay didelphus can happen at least 70 cases have been recorded so far kiersey's triplet birth was a medical first you know that's so you got two identical twins and then another fraternal twin all born right. at the same time from different wombs now this is 14 years ago uh, so the girls are early teens right now Right. And so you can't, you wonder how they're how the relate how that dynamics of the relationship because siblings always. I know that's right. They're 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 mean. <laughs> right, and they always go through. Says but, the sibling you know, that but was then mean. Sometimes, um, you know, my 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 wife said that you know her two twins, but she also has two older daughters, you know, that are not twins. And she said more often they as they were growing up, one twin would pair with one of the older sisters, and the other twin would pair with the other older sister. You know, so. Uh, it's interesting to see how that will will trace out. Right. Okay. So, twin school. Speaking speaking of England, a middle school in Lincolnshire uh, or Lincolnshire. Lincolnshire. Yeah. Uh, England has record breaking twenty sets of twins in attendance. That's a lot. I bet their their uniform involves name tags. <laughs> uh, the school blew the bre- previous record holder, because, of course, Guinness keeps track of this kind of thing, out of the water by 12 sets. 
Most incredibly, the school welcomed not one or two sets of identical twins this past September, but six, Mm -hmm. all of whom started grade seven. So six sets of seventh grade twins. Right, twins, right. (laughs) Uh, Since the school requires students to dress in identical blue and white uniforms, it's proven difficult for teachers to tell the siblings apart. So there we go. We are looking to get little name badges for the blazer lapel so we Uh can tell who who is who, says one teacher. And uh, when asked to explain the the school's twin-filled seventh grade class, baffled educators resorted to blaming it on something in the water. Something in the water. (laughs) (laughs) You know, I, I hate to admit this, but uh, I've been a teacher for many, many years now, uh, 40, 41 years. But about two or three years ago, I had twin girls, identical twin girls, but they were in different classes. But it took me about three weeks into the school year before I realized that I had <laughs> two, two different. Uh, I kept thinking, well, I've seen that girl a lot. It seems like, you know, she's really around here a lot. Well, no, it was a, two different ones at the same time. That's funny. <laughs> Well, here's a story that uh, comes to us from a, a place called this. Uh, I'm sorry, theweek.com. Uh, two sets of twins, uh, Stephen and Leanne Beloyan, had been trying to get pregnant for a long time, but without success. After undergoing in vitro fertilization, they were thrilled to learn that Leanne was pregnant. Several weeks into the pregnancy, the Beloyans were sur- very surprised to learn that they were going to be parents of not one, but two pairs of twins. The big day arrived on June 7, 2005, as Leanne gave birth to Lauren, Sarah, Benjamin, and Samuel, who were born in that order all within four minutes. I believe we have wow. a picture there that we'll, we can put that on yes. our, our website. Yes. Two sets of twins. And, you know, an uh, in vitro fertilization, that, that brings up a, an interesting topic because I have a friend named Suzanne right. who has two kids uh, ages five and seven, mm-hmm. but... They're kind of twins because yeah. they were they were the eggs were harvested at the same time, right? But they were implanted at different times, and so they're twins, but not quite. It just right. depends on how you how you define twins. Well, that's true, and I think there was a pretty famous case that was that's been in the news recently about uh, twins that the, the fertilized egg had been frozen for more than twenty years. Two different oh, wow. sisters. Um, I just happened to see that the other day. In fact. Um, Twins give a birth on the same day. You know, a lot of twins like doing things together. Uh, <laughs> it was an especially exciting New Year's for twin sisters Amy and Ashley Nelson, who gave birth to their respective sons within a two-hour span in an Akron, Ohio hospital. They didn't expect this. In fact, their due dates were about a week apart. But after Amy called her mom at 4 a.m. on December 31st to say that she was headed to the hospital, her sister's call came just two hours later. Amy's son, Donovan, arrived at first at 12, 11 p.m. on New Year's Eve, and his cousin, Aiden, followed at 2.03 p.m. on New Year's Eve. Of course, you know what New Year's Eve babies are called? Tax deductions. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's bad. Tax deductions. Just in on the wire. Right, under the wire. Under the wire. Twins, this is an odd, odd story, though. This comes out of uh, the country of Finland in 2002. A pair of 73-year-old twins were killed on a road in Finland. Now, there's nothing unusual at all about that at first glance until you find out that they were killed separately within two hours of each other. The first of the twins was hit by a truck and killed while he was riding his bicycle along the road. Two hours later, his brother died in exactly the same way. Not the same truck, but uh, the same (laughs) same way. Because that would have been crazy. To make matters uh, even more odd, police had not yet informed the second twin of his brother's death, which means that he wasn't merely just trying to follow him to the grave. That's unusual. That is very strange. Assassin? (laughs) Somebody was after them in the truck, perhaps. I don't know. I got the wrong one! (laughs) That's bad. Um, From... uh, uh, a website called 247wallst.com. I don't know if that's supposed to mean Wall Street or just Walst, but anyway. <laughs> uh, we have some article about celebrity twins. Now, some of these people I didn't know were actually twins. And one of them involves one of my favorite movies. Uh, oh, really? That right. surprises me that that's your favorite, one of your favorite well, movies. Well, I think that, the, that, that teachers love this movie. Uh, whereas non-teachers, which we might say normal people, don't always get the movie. <laughs> but the movie okay, that refer- would be me. That would be me because I've seen this movie. Yeah. <laughs> and I've I'm like, it. why am I sitting here? I've seen it probably <laughs> a dozen times and laugh at it every time. But, uh, of course, I'm referring to Napoleon Dynamite. Vote for Pedro. <laughs> <laughs> right. 
Even the biggest fans of the 2004 hit movie, Napoleon Dynamite, might not know that twins are a major part of this picture. John Hedder, who plays the title character uh, Napoleon, has an identical twin brother named Dan. The two talented and hilarious identical, edit, uh, sorry, identical <laughs> twins grew up in Fort Collins. See how hilarious they are? I can't even get it all out. They grew up in Fort Collins, Colorado. Uh, John has had more than 70 acting credits, including starring in The Bench Warmers, Blades of Glory, and yeah. Just Like Heaven. <clears throat> now, Dan is not an actor, but he is also involved in motion pictures, uh, in visual animation, and in special effects, most notably in the Guardians of the Galaxy series. Oh, I like that, those movies. Okay. But now, wait, there's another uh, there's another twin involved with Napoleon Dynamite. And, and uh, Phil, you gave the hint out just a minute a minute ago. One of the uh, main characters in Napoleon Dynamite was played by actor Efren Ramirez. And you might be able to guess that Efren played Napoleon's friend Pedro Sanchez, as in vote for Pedro. Efren has also appeared in several TV shows, including ER and Scrubs. Uh, Efren and his twin brother, Carlos, grew up in, in Los Angeles. As child actors, Carlos appeared on The Love Boat and Twilight Zone. And Carlos has also served in the Air Force. So I didn't know either one of those uh, actors had identical twins from that movie. Now, let's, uh, Leah, you've, you've raised three sons, I know. Uh, right. I, I'm, I'm thinking. I'm thinking <laughs> Where are we well, going with this? I'm thinking that, uh, <laughs> that, that, that maybe there's been some wrestling uh, watching going on in your house. I'm not sure. Uh, no. I, why would I let them watch that? <laughs> they didn't well, need any they, inspiration. I think, they, I think they watched it behind your back, perhaps, maybe. <laughs> well, maybe you've heard of Jimmy and Jay Uso. Um, if you're up on your uh, WWE trivia, uh, but even if you're a casual fan, you likely have heard of them. Uh, they are a tag team in the WWE. And their father, who's not a twin, he was also a wrestler named Rikishi. They have won the WWE Tag Team Championship and the Slammy Awards. <laughs> I love that name, the Slammy Awards for Tag Team of the Year twice. However, the Usos are not the only WWE twin attraction. You see, we have Brie and Nikki Bella. Brie and Nikki are women WWE tag team stars and identical twins. I like this story. Now, th they became famous in 2008 when they pulled a switcheroo during the middle of a match. You see, Brie was being worn down by another lady wrestler named Victoria. At one point, Victoria pushed Brie under the bottom rope and out of the ring. Brie then rolls under the ring, but then suddenly reemerges full of energy. <laughs> she hops back into the ring and quickly subdues her opponent. Of course, the instant replay shows that it was really Nikki who emerged from under the ring in place of Brie. This maneuver became known as twin magic. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, the Bella Twins have gained even more fame starring in the E! Network show Total Divas. So they've, they've branched out from the WWE <laughs> and uh, brought their twin fame to other places. There are several other notable celebrity twins, including Ronde and Tiki Barber, who were both had very successful football careers in the NFL. They were both named All-Pro multiple times. Julian and Joaquin Castro, they were both in politics. Joaquin is a United States congressman from Texas, and his brother Julian was the mayor of San Antonio, Texas, and then served as Secretary of uh, Housing and Urban Development under President Obama. Don't, wait, don't, isn't that kind of neat about their names? Okay, right. so it's... Supposed to be alliterative, but it's really not. <laughs> you know, Julian and Joaquin. It both starts with J, but right. not the same sound. Okay. And then we have, of course, Mark and Scott Kelly. Right. Who were both astronauts. Their status as twins helped researchers investigate the long-term effects of space travel as Scott spent a year in the International Space Station while Mark stayed on the ground. I think you've got some more information about that, uh, don't you, Liam? Right. Um, the The NASA study was, when, once it came out, once it became public, uh, a lot of stories started popping up stating that it was amazing that Scott's DNA muta mutated and was no longer identical to Mark's. Uh, the less while he was in space, right? right? Well, no, even you know, once he came back, right. that now they were no longer they no longer had identical DNA. Truth is, they didn't have identical DNA to begin with. Uh -oh. Everyone has unique DNA, right? Uh, so, so their their chromosomal makeup, and this is getting really sciencey here, okay? Right. Uh, or their DNA coding started out identical, just like all identical twins do, but the DNA strand depends on much more than just genetics. 
it, nature versus nurture kind of thing. Right. Uh, nutrition and environment has an impact on DNA development, even in the womb. So no two humans have the exact same DNA. Uh, and or Well, no two humans have the same exact experience. Even with identical twins, they don't receive the same amount of blood flow or nutrition even in the womb. Right. So their d- DNA starts changing. And so while it started out identical, it didn't stay that way very long. And so by the time that they were born, they, they had unique DNA. So I you see. can't have one brother commit a crime and and DNA evidence show that it, it may be the other. You, you just don't have it's that. It's unique. That's Even right. With twins, the DNA is it's unique. unique. But uh, but the study did show that they that there was some stresses and some changes on the DNA that didn't show in in Scott. Right. That there were changes in Scott that did not show in Mark. And so right. so yeah. the the study is really fascinating. We're not going to get into it. <laughs> But we were, you know, look it up. It, it's right. really cool, but but a little much to get into here. Um, Mark was also elected to the United States Senate just this, yeah. uh, in 2020 from the state of Arizona. Um, then we have Camilla and Rebecca Rosso, who appeared as twins Janice and Jessica on the Disney TV series The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody. I, I think I haven't seen this one, but uh, I don't have kids at just the right age or grandkids at the right age to have seen that one. Uh, they were chosen for this role when executive producers of the show picked them out of the audience during a live taping of the program. And so I mentioned to Sarah and Laura, I said, why didn't y'all get, you know, get in on some of that? <laughs> You'd Which be making some money I here. think they Come tried, on. actually, uh, several times. So they, they, they would follow. Um, uh, they were big Kelly Clarkson fans. I think Kelly recognized them because they showed up at her concert concerts a lot. Um, and um, let's see. Okay, Okay, we have... This is like one of my favorite, Rami and Sami Malik. Are we saying that right, Malik? Yeah, I think so. Rami is an actor who won Best Actor Oscars, uh, at Bet- I'm sorry, the Best Actor Oscar for his portrayal of rocker Freddie Mercury in the 2019 movie Bohemian Rhapsody. He oh did an amazing yeah. job. He did good. Right. Yes, he did. He also won an Emmy for Outstanding Lead Actor, so he's in television and in movies. Uh, t- outstanding lead actor in the TV drama Mr. Robot. He has appeared in several movies and TV shows, including Gilmore Girls and Night at the Museum. But in my opinion, Brother Sami is even more talented, as Sami is an English teacher at a middle school in Los Angeles. <laughs> you see, being, <laughs> being, a middle, being, a, being a middle school teacher is a superpower. See, I, 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 am I agree. A, I am a middle school teacher myself. Now, there's one. <laughs> thank you very much. Appreciate it. One infamous pair of identical twins noted in the article were Ronnie and Gregory, and I think it's Cray, K-R-A-Y. No, wait, 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 wait. Start that again. It's Ronnie and Reggie. Ronnie, okay, Ronnie and Reggie, Gregory, Reggie. Carrie. I kind of like Gregory. Yeah. Gregory. <laughs> Gregory. I kid like Gregory without the G. Ronnie and Reggie Cray. Um, they were born in London in 1933. The Cray twins were notorious gangsters in the 1950s and 60s. They established a gang in London's East End called The Firm, which was involved in arson, armed robbery, racketeering, and murder. They both received life prison sentences for murder in 1968. Ronnie died in prison in 1995. Reggie had become a born-again Christian while in prison. He was released in 2000 on compassionate grounds as he was suffering from terminal bladder cancer, and he died at home soon thereafter. So interesting twins nonetheless. Well, my favorite celebrity twins, and we can't get away without without <laughs> mentioning them, James and Oliver Phelps. They are the twins that play Fred and George in the Harry Potter movies. Right. Uh, and did you know that they're not actually redheads? They had to have their hair, and they hated this. Their eyebrows dyed red so that they could blend into the Weasley clan. When one fan asked him what the best and worst parts of working with his brother were, were Oliver said... The best thing about working with your brother is if you're late, you can blame someone else. The worst thing about working with your brother is that if he's late, he can blame someone <laughs> else. <laughs> and I'm thinking, you know, are they ever, you know, arriving at different times anyway? Like, right. you know, I just imagine that they do everything together. Uh, okay. Some, some twins like doing things together and others don't. Well, that's so. that's true. That's yeah. true. But I'm kind of thinking that they're they're very, <laughs> they're very close. Now for today's bookshop spot. 
the part of the show where we take you on a virtual tour of one of the most magical of places, an independent bookshop. Well, the bookseller is located on North Lincoln Avenue in Chicago, Illinois. I love Chicago. It's the Windy City. That's right. The name is Bookseller, like where you would store wines. That's not by accident, because the owner, Susie's two favorite things are books and wine. Well, what a great combination there. I think so. Wine seller, bookseller. So along with offering new books, totes, uh, greeting cards, journals, planners, book lights, subscription programs, there is also an indoor cafe with a coffee, beer, and wine, wine, of course. They also have a lovely outdoor cafe open during the summer. Check to see that they are open, though, because of these times of COVID, there are different real restrictions in, in, in place. But pretty soon, hopefully, that will all be gone by. Anyway, the bookseller opened in 2004, and in the past 17 years, Susie says we have come a long way. In 2013, we were voted the best bookstore in Chicago, by Chicago Magazine, and in 2016, they were voted the best bookstore in Chicago by the Chicago Reader. And that's some pretty high praise right there. Uh, the, you know, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of great uh, places in Chicago, and so to be at the top of that uh, that list would really be quite remarkable. In the past, we would typically host over 300 events every year, both at our store and off-site. These included book groups, local author events, national author events, midnight release parties, although I bet those are fun, especially with the wine, the wine cellar for sure, uh, an annual Chicago Young Adult Book Festival, graduate student readings, and stand-up comedy. Oh, and an annual spelling bee for adults. Now, that seems like it would be a really fun night. For events that require a large space, our cooking demonstrations, we have multi-partnerships with off-site venues that we collaborate with regularly. I wonder if they would do like a cookbook uh, off-site cooking thing. I bet they, that, that something would be, they would that do. Would that would be, be fun. Interesting. During the pandemic, they switched to hosting virtual events using Zoom. So if you want to read, uh, look them up uh, on their website, www.booksellerinc, that's B-O-O-K-C-E-L-L-A-R-I-N-C, Dot com. Nice. They're also on Facebook, Insta- Instagram, and Twitter. That's right. I'm looking at them right now on Facebook, and, and the store looks absolutely amazing. Amazing place. Um. Okay, so getting into genetics, we, you know, we've had all these stories about, about twins. Right. And so, you know, and the, the simplistic part of it is that there's fraternal twins, which is when sure. there's two eggs. Yeah. Uh, and and they're really just like regular siblings. Right. Uh, they can look very much alike, or they can not, not look yeah. very much alike. They're just like regular siblings, but they shared the womb. And then there's identical twins, where you have one egg that's fertilized and it separates into two babies. And scientists right. don't scientists and doctors really don't understand all of this. Exactly they don't have why. all the a- answers. They don't know why that that is ma- you know does. that happens. Uh, but identical twins have the same genetic makeup, and they're always the same sex. So uh, these twins, these are some interesting twins that are of different races. Yeah, I've, I've read this. This is unusual. And and it's not uh, – you say it's unu- it is unusual, yeah. but there are more than just this case. When I was looking this up, there were, there were several. But um, in 1997, Donna Douglas gave birth to healthy twin baby girls – but did a double take when she looked at them for the first time. Donna is half Jamaican and her husband is white. One of the twin girls, Lucy, had fair skin like her father, and the other twin, Maria, had dark skin like her mother. As they grew, their differences in looks became even more evident as Lucy's hair was red. So she wasn't Mm -hmm. just like... Right. Kind of white. She was, you know, she was that... (laughs) Yeah, that's right. She was that spectrum, very... Very light-skinned and red hair, and Maria's hair was black, and her skin darkened even more to a a caramel color. Lucy talking about her mother on the day that she and her sister were born. She says, it was such a shock for our mother because obviously things like skin color don't show on scans before birth. So she had no idea that we were so different. When the midwife handed us both to her, she was just speechless. We were in the same class at infant school. But no one ever had a problem telling us apart, <laughs> she explained. Right. Most twins look like two peas in a pod, but Maria and I couldn't look more different if we tried. We don't even look like we have the same parents, let alone <laughs> having been born at the same time. Right. 
and they have three older siblings who all have mixed skin color. Uh, so Lucy says, all of our older brothers and sisters have skin color, which is between Maria and I. We right. are at opposite ends of the spectrum, and they are all somewhere in between. In between. Yet they are the twins. That's right. <laughs> Lucy says that one of the great things about having a twin who looks completely different is that people don't mistake them for one another. Right. Uh, their personalities also very different. In college, Lucy studied uh, art and design, and Maria studied law and psychology. Different interests. Okay, so we can't have this episode without talking about conjoined twins. The conjoined twins are always interesting, I think. Uh, yes. and so Okay, so conjoined twins are those that are physically connected to each other. It's a rare occurrence, not understood completely. Uh, some scientists say it happens when an egg doesn't split completely, and other scientists say that they think it, it's when an egg splits completely and then for some reason fuses, fuses back, back together. together. Huh. Uh, whatever the cause, conjoined, twin, uh, conjoined twins are always identical. The location of their fusion varies, but is usually in the abdomen or trunk area. The extent of the fusion varies, and unfortunately, mo- most conjoined twins do not survive long after being right. born. But advances in medicine have helped many to not only survive, but in some unique cases, to also be successfully separated. So, another name for conjoined twins, have you heard Siamese twins? Right. Well, the reason that is, it's because of Chang Chang and Ang Bunker, the first conjoined twins that were pretty well known around the world. Right. Chang and Ang were born in 1811 in a Chinese community in Siam, which is now called Thailand. The boys were 17 years old when a Scottish doctor discovered them and brought them to America, where they began to tour and charge people to see their freak, freak show. show. Uh, yeah. Uh, They were connected through such a thin thread that they could do almost anything normal men could do, and quite a few most could not do. They would perform backflips and somersaults together, showcase a repertoire of wit, or just stand on display and answer any questions that the audience had. When they were 21, they struck... Sorry. When they were 21, they struck out on their own and ran their own show for another seven or eight years, making quite a bit of money. And, and let's just stop right. for a minute. I know freak shows are really out of uh, vogue, <laughs> if you want to say. They're looked at as being cruel and everything. But honestly, at the time, um, and they were. I'm not going to say that they weren't I don't know. Cruel. I've seen some cable TV shows lately that might qualify. <laughs> True. <laughs> but it was a good way for people to see things that, that – Unusual, yeah, unusual sure. and, and to educate them a little bit. Right. And it was a good way for uh, these people to make money in mm-hmm. ways, you know, that, that they couldn't normally, you know, make by normal means. And the greatest showman comes to mind. Right. Them, yeah. um, so, but they did tire at being gawked at. And uh, and after about seven or eight years uh, of, of running their own show, they decided to retire and uh, try to live normal lives. The men bought land and settled in North Carolina, where they met and married two sisters. Their married life was uh, one for quite a bit of speculation and scandal, but they didn't let it really bother them. Right. They just wanted to live. Yeah, right. They just, I think, I think they kind of had thick skin at that point where they, you know. And um, they just wanted to live as normal as possible. And combined, the brothers had 21 children. Against the odds, Chang and Eng lived quite a long time for conjoined, conjoined twins. In January of 1874, Eng woke up to find his brother dead. Mm. According to allthatsinteresting.com, one of Eng's sons rushed in, alarmed by his father's cries, and tried to help him wake Chang up, but nothing would work. Uncle Chang is dead, the boy declared at last. Then I am going, Eng told his son. Within three hours, Eng was also dead. In his final moments, he asked his son to help him pull his brother's body as close to him as he could. The Siamese twins were 63. Hmm. An examination after their death concluded that Chang and Ang, while conjoined by just a small part of their anatomy, could not have ever been successfully separated as they had shared a liver. Uh, And and I didn't put it down here, but also they they concluded that um, Chang had died of a blood clot. But they're not really sure why Aang passed away. It didn't affect him, and they they don't know why he died. Isn't that interesting? That's really interesting. You know. I mean, I've heard things like, you know, that the, you know, people that have been together all their lives. Right. That, right. That one passes away early, 
the other one will be would probably follow based on depression. Right. Yeah, and we've yeah reason. we've seen that happen, and that's probably what did happen. That mm-hmm. physically yeah. Yeah, they didn't know, reason. right? Yeah. Okay, so getting even further into genetics, uh, there's another type of twin that is not readily apparent to the casual observer because it results in only one human being. That would be chimerism. Chimerism. That's when the split of an egg happens to produce twins, but for some unknown reason fuses back together to form just one baby. While a rare occurrence, it's not really known how often this happens because it takes a pretty unique set of circumstances to figure it out. Right. In cases of chimerism, um, or ch- what did you say, chimerism? Ch- I think it's chimerism. It might be. Sure. It might yeah. be. I might be butchering it. An individual will have two separate sets of DNA. That's right. While identical twins have identical sets of chromosomes, <laughs> they do each have unique sets of DNA, like we said. And so someone with chimerism or chemo, <laughs> however you want to pronounce it, may have some organs with certain DNA sequencing while other organs belong to the other twin and has different DNA. Right. One case that brought this to light was when Karen Keegan needed a kidney transplant in 2002. Her family, including her three grown sons, were tested to see if they could be matches, and right. it was discovered that two of her sons could not be her biological children. <laughs> and, and she's like, well, I kind of... I kind of know, know I was I there. Kinda, yeah. yeah, I kind of gave birth to them. Um, so the medical mystery was solved when doctors figured out that Karen's womb had different DNA sequence than that of her blood. And so she was, in her essence, own her own twin. That's really fun. Uh, chimerism, 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 chimerism yeah. <laughs> can also occur when a person receives bone marrow or an organ from another person. So they're, then they're not their own twin, but that, that DNA then is inside their body, and it migrates to other parts of their body. Uh, Genetics is fascinating. And Mm. I'll I'll also say that uh, they have found that women that have given birth also carry their children's DNA with them. And so, yes, so I have had three sons and a daughter, so I have male DNA in me. And my second son may actually have some of his older brother's DNA. It's... They're starting to find out. DNA is just like on the cutting edge right. of, of what we're discovering. Um, I think we need to follow up on chimerism with uh, with another episode. At I some think point, so. There seems like there's a lot there that we could we could find out more. And I believe that even goes back in into mythology and. That's right. And, That's and, where it gets its name. Right. Um, yeah. We we really do need to to do that. Well, we're going to finish up with some uh, humorous stories. That this these came from a website called LittleThings.com. There's no names involved here. People had just uh, twins that actually were written into this website with sharing some of their own experiences as being a twin. And uh, so I think some of them are pretty funny. Uh, one, um, one wrote in and said, A friend and his wife go to the same supermarket every week. His identical twin also goes there with his wife. One day, after summing up the courage, the cashier pulls my friend's wife aside and says, I'm sorry to have to tell you this, but I've seen your husband here several times with another woman. <laughs> <laughs> and can you imagine the internal struggle right. this guy had this yeah. whole time? I was just That's no. that. Oh, and and you know, really blatant coming to the same place with two different women. <laughs> <laughs> I like this one. <laughs> My friend said hi to his brother one morning. Well, it turns out his bro- brother was actually his own reflection in a window. <laughs> his mother saw it and has never let him live it down. <laughs> now, that sounds like something I would do, and I don't even have a twin. I think, I think, that's, <laughs> I think that's great, you know, because uh, other people get them mixed up, and then he actually got mixed up with his own <laughs> reflection. I like this story. I joined the Peace Corps shortly after my identical twin became a Marine officer. I worked as a teacher in Eastern Europe. Over drinks at a dinner during my service with friends of my, of my host family, one of the gentlemen used to be a Soviet helicopter pilot, and he asked me if I'd like to see his uniform. We're almost exactly the same size, and so he lets me try it on. Thinking how cool this is, I post a picture online wearing it to show everyone. My brother calls me a few days later, really upset because <laughs> during his screening for a security clearance, <laughs> someone finds this picture of him wearing a perfectly tailored Soviet regalia. He yells at me for getting him into trouble and complains that he might not get his, his clearance might be postponed. <laughs> and that's awesome. That's a great story. My twin sons work at McDonald's. The manager likes to put one at the pay window and the other at the food window just to mess with customers. <laughs> 
And this one, uh, my twin and I were, uh, were in the same high school economics class. Everyone in the class thought he was funny, but I was really more quiet and polite. And I've always wondered, does twins do this? One day, we switched seats. He was being his usual annoying self and getting destroyed by the teacher. She didn't think he was funny at all. At the end of the class, he says to me, Wow, she really hates you. <laughs> now, listen, if I had an identical twin, I would I totally I switch places. It would certainly be so tempting, you know, to do that. And finally, um, my twin brother and I once used ident- our identicalness at a church Christmas party. My brother was supposed to play Santa, so he goes off to, quote, find Santa. Well, I'm in the building, and I put on the Santa suit, and I go into the party. Now, most of my brother's church hadn't met me. And the kids all think that they know who it is. Five or ten minutes later, my brother comes in saying, Sorry, guys, I couldn't find him. I couldn't find the costume. And uh, all the kids lose their minds you know, because <laughs> they, they, they think he, that he's him, and then he really walks in. So <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> and now it's time, boys and girls, for the trivia challenge. <laughs> All right, all right. Hold it down, you people. Now, now we need to get into the uh, to the rewards of the previous uh, tr- uh, trivia questions. Going back to positively presidential, one of the presidents mentioned in the episode was in the daily habit of getting up every morning and bathing nude in the Potomac River. Which president enjoyed this daily nude dip? Well, for some hints, we mentioned that it wasn't Taft, whose bathing quirks we covered in the episode. He was kind of large, you know, kind of a big fellow. That's you know, right. Kinda, and it... He would probably make a pretty large wake <laughs> if he dove into the, uh, might swamp uh, some of the uh, other vessels in the river. And it was definitely before the internet or the age of instant news. Yeah, actually, it, for, it hasn't been any time within the last hundred years, that's for sure. Well, our listener, Tom Gregg. Yay, Woo-hoo! Tom. Yay! Good job, Tom. Tom came up with the correct answer as he posted it was John Quincy Adams who bathed naked in the Potomac. And he also uh, mentioned the book that we had uh, used for a lot of that information, and we're grateful that the publishers gave us uh, permission to use information. The book was called Presidential Anecdotes. And uh, he says, I believe that uh, it was there was, I'm sorry, I believe it was there that I read it. Uh, I remember something about a female reporter who wanted an interview from him on some issue. She sat on his clothes and refused to leave until he gave her a statement. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we looked that up. That would have been Anne Royal. She right. was a Revolutionary War widow who, um, scandalously, I think, in that time, a woman traveling, uh, she traveled around the country and she wrote books. And in those books, she was very scathing about wow. about certain people and, and certain situations, and it caused Slander her to have <laughs> several enemies. And so historians believe that the story of her withholding the president's clothes was actually made up by her enemies in, in order to soil her character. Oh, well, that seems kind of unfair, doesn't it? Absolutely. It still does, makes a good story. But... Never let the facts get in the way of a good story. Uh, that's right. Anyway, thank you, Tom, Greg, for listening to, to our uh, our podcast. And, and uh, congratulations uh, on winning it. Exactly. Done. And then uh, in our Strange Conflicts uh, episode, we talked about, or the, the trivia challenge question was, in 1962, a shadowy figure approached the fence at a du- Duluth Air Force Base. A soldier raised his gun and shot at it, which triggered a sabotage alarm. Pilots mm. scrambled in response to the nuclear war they thought had started. So World War Three. They wow. found Luckily- a Yeti. <laughs> 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 Phil, were you out for a stroll? Right. Luckily, an officer. I cannot confirm or deny this. <laughs> Luckily, an officer sped toward the tarmac, flashing his car's headlights, and stopped the launch. And the reason he had to do this is because they didn't have any towers back then, or right. in that area. The only way that the taxiing airplanes could get information, or you know, get stopped, was actually driving somebody out somebody driving the out there on the runway. Yeah, uh-huh. for sure. And so, what was the shadowy figure that nearly started World War Three? And it was not. Unfortunately, because it would have been a really cool story. Right. It was not a Sasquatch or Bigfoot or right. anything like that. Or Nellie Clawson. Woo! Yay, Nellie. Yay, Nellie. She Nellie was Clawson. our winner when she posted on our Facebook page that it was actually a bear that nearly caused World War Three. So there you have um, it, folks. Bear, bear. Not the war Russian threats. bear, just an ordinary bear, right? And bear presidents. <laughs> right. 
Okay, so now it's time uh, for a trivia challenge, and you guys know how it works. You yeah. like and follow our Facebook page at Remnants 2 Podcast. Like and share this episode post, the Twins episode post, and put your answer to the ch- trivia challenge in the comments of that post. First person to do that will be the winner and will be mentioned in a future episode of Remnant Stew. And this one is very short. What fictional twins were compared to an apple that had been cut in half? Oh, that's a great question. We had a little clue earlier on in this, too, that might help you lead, come the right way. Remnant Stew is created by me, Leah Lamp. Dr. Stephen Meeker and I research, write, and host each episode. Audio is produced by the fantastic Philip Sinkfeld. You got your work cut out today, Phil. I made a lot of mistakes. (laughs) Our theme music is by Kevin McLeod with voiceover by Morgan Hughes. (laughs) You can connect with us through our Facebook and Instagram. And if you have an idea like Tanya did about a future episode, uh, email us suggestions at staycurious at remnantstew.com. Before you go, please hit the subscribe button so you won't miss an episode. Maybe take the time to give us a review on iTunes. We really love seeing those reviews. Share Remnant Stew with your friends, your neighbors, your mom, your evil twin, and, and that <laughs> one real sketchy cousin. <laughs> yeah, you know who that is. Yeah. And until the next time, remember, make an effort to be kind to everyone. And, and always, always stay, stay curious. curious.